Hi everyone, this is Chris Petri. Welcome back again. We're having uh, some fun here in the studio. We're actually bringing a painting that we created out in the field. We did a shore painting along the shore. Um, beautiful beach and, and some homes here in the distance. And um, some mountains in the distance. Um, we had a um, rock jetty that came out into the water here. And then we had some gra uh, some gra some grasses and um, weeds along along the shore here along the sand dunes, and we had some fencing, some wood slat fencing that we always see a lot a lot of times at the shore. So we had a lot of interesting subject matter here when we went to the shore to paint. And if you haven't seen the part one of this, which is actually the the live painting, it was uh, if you type into YouTube. Um, Chris Petri, and then you type in raw footage and sure. So if you type in uh, Chris Petri raw footage sure, those keywords, this video will will come up for you, and you can watch this video. It's maybe ten minutes, and it's basically I just brought my camera and a tripod out there and. Uh, put it onto the beach and just set it up and we walk and I put it onto my um, My uh, painting and I just painted and I just went for it. It was a really beautiful day out It was warm and sunny. So the paint was drying fast I was trying to paint really quick and again This was a field, you know painting a plain air painting that we did in, in at the beach the shore along the ocean so You know I had to work fast. It was, it was really warm out the Sun was shining the Sun was actually shining on my paper so I really had to go fast to try to get a, a decent look to my painting. Uh, so I went quick and got my washes in and now we're going to come back in the studio and we're going to finish this painting. And so this can be some things that you can think about if you want to go out and do some plein air painting outdoors. You can start your painting, get as much as you can done. Sometimes you're going to have rain come by and you have to pack up and put your painting away so it doesn't get ruined from the rain. Or maybe the wind really gets really crazy and you have to like pack up because it's just too windy to work. Um, or somebody might come up and say, you, you, you can't paint here or you're not allowed to be on this property. I've done that before where I'm out and I didn't know I was in a wrong location and someone told me I had to, you know, leave the, the premises. So all kinds of things can come up when you're not in the studio, but you're out in the do outdoors and painting. So many times we will finish our paintings actually when we get back to the studio or we'll touch them up as well too because we are usually working pretty fast when we're in the field because um, a lot of times um, you know we're trying to get to another uh, location we want to get to before it gets dark so we're trying to finish up our painting quick so we might do half or three quarters of the painting and then we'll and then we'll realize we can go back and finish it in the studio so that's the thought behind this video is starting a painting outdoors in plain air and then coming back to the studio and finishing it up and maybe we'll find that this can be a nice painting we can frame or maybe it's just going to be a fun painting that we keep you know in the studio and put it in one of our scrapbooks and we can just you know you know a couple of years from now look back at it and have a fun time remembering the day and being out painting or and so forth so um we could always have fun with our paintings and painting outdoors and so let's uh, go for here um again the first video was uh chris petri if you type that into youtube raw footage sure and those uh, raw footage and shore would be the uh, keywords and Chris Petri, of course. And, and you type that into YouTube search uh, window and you hit enter and you'll find it. And also subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, you'll get our weekly videos. We make videos every week here. And uh, you'll be able to also check out all of our videos we have in uh, Chris Petri uh, YouTube channel, which is basically... Uh, over 300 videos we have you can look at all the videos and there's all different kinds of subject matter you know um, shore scenes boats flowers um, landscapes mountain pictures seascapes still life you name it we've done it we've done it all here so let's um, continue we'll finish up this painting 
And um, first, let's do this. Let's use something we really don't use all that much. You'll see me, maybe I've used this a, a few times on YouTube painting, but not, not too frequently. But it is, it's a great brush. It's a, uh, a hake brush. So this is a hake brush, and it's great for, like, grasses and weeds and things. They're great in landscapes and so forth, so I just get the, uh, the brush a little bit, uh, dampen, the, dampen the brush, and then I kind of splay out the, the, um, the, um, the hairs. And this, usually you can buy these in sets of three, so this is like a, a maybe a medium size, and they got a larger size, and then a smaller size. All right, so we have that. We've kind of just got the idea that we're going to splay out our hockey bra uh, Ron Ranson uh, hockey brush. I got that at uh, Cheap Joe's online, or Ch Cheap Joe's art stuff. And uh, we'll make some burnt umber. I mean, that's um, olive green. A little bit of uh, sap green, yellow ochre, a little bit of cerulean blue. So let's just get a nice, interesting uh, array of colors just across the palette here. That looks pretty good. Then we'll take the paint, get it into the bristles. And we'll see if we can get some uh, interesting grasses and things. Per look at that. Wow, perfect. Uh, let's g go with the wind in one direction. So mostly we'll have the, the, the brush strokes going to the right. Okay, so we have some interesting colors there. We can go with some darker, maybe some burnt umber and a little bit of cobalt blue. The key here is let's do some varieties. Let's not have just all one color, all one look. Let's have different. So again, I'm going to splay out the brushes, the brush uh, hairs. Now maybe here, I might have had an issue. So I didn't like that there. And I just quickly tried to blot that out. I want to leave that uh, open like this with no grasses there. Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. And that is looking pretty good. I don't want to go too overboard, just a little bit. Maybe um, we'll do a little more over here. And we'll just lighten up the uh, tone, tonal value a little bit, so not too dark, just to have a little more. Good. Okay, now we'll pick up and we'll use our uh, round brush. We have our Charles Reed uh, Sable Round Brush by Escoda. It's a number eight. And let's uh, get in some Cerulean blue mixed with a little bit of the other mixture there for a little bit of a grayish color. Green, you know, maybe some green and brown into that cerulean blue. And we'll just do some speckles here a little bit. Sand, kind of a sand feel along the more the foreground. We don't want to go too much with splashing over here, but in the foreground where it's more details, we'll do that. Um, we'll go with some Here we'll use some yellow ochre, same thing. A couple more of those. 
And then maybe for a little more excitement, we'll put in a little bit of that red, cadmium red. Just a, touch, a little bit of that, not too many of those. Um, just, you know, those are more really exciting colors. It's more, it's a much more um, striking and vibrant color, the red, so that's going to stand out more. So we would use a little less of that. And then the in the yellow, you know, the, the um, yellow ochre and the cerulean blue speckles, those, we can do a little more of those. So we would go less with the, with the red, cadmium red speckles, spatters. And um, that's looking fine. Let's do some of the uh, fence uh, slats here. So that we're going to use um, burnt sienna, burnt umber, uh, maybe a little blue, cerulean blue. And I'll try to change up that. Again, I always try to break up lines, not too many. You can also use a tissue to break some lines up. This one's close up, so I, I think I'm going to do a little more darker. Maybe even some uh, French ultramarine blue. And again, I just sort of mix between cerulean blue and the uh, burnt sienna and burnt umber mixture. I go straight straight into the paint. And then for a shadow color, we can go with cerulean blue with a little mineral violet. Purplish uh, color here. We can just... And then I would just maybe hit and miss that a little bit. And I make that a little darker, closer. And again, same thing, I go into the uh, burnt sienna, burnt umber, cerulean blue. Again, we're having fun here. We're just enjoying ourselves. We're finishing up our painting that we started at the shore when we were out doing some plein air painting and carefree fun here. Sometimes the faster we go and the more carefree we go, it looks a little better. It depends on what we're doing. For this kind of painting, this was a fast, really quick painting. So when I'm doing my touch-ups, I want to make it the same the same way. I don't want to... You know, does that make sense? If I paint this painting outdoors, let's say, 
and I paint really quickly and fast as I'm out there doing this, if I come back into the studio, I want to get in that same mindset that I was did this painting in, and then use those same type of the same type of pace as I paint this. Because if I sit here and go really slow and say, "Oh, I'm going to take the next two hours to do these few details," now you're going to see that it will actually look a lot different. You'll notice that it almost looks like two different paintings. Some of the details look like very tight and um, not too free flowing, and then the rest of the painting looks free flowing, and so that can be a problem to uh, kind of keep an eye on. Whereas if I took my time out in the field painting this, then I'd do the same thing. I'd come back to the studio, studio and really take my time when I'm doing the details and so forth. Um, so I guess I just want to match the pace that I painted the um, Okay, those shadows help quite a bit to make this look exciting. And uh, I'm going to um, also use my uh, Alvaro Castagnette needlepoint brush. I find this is always tremendously helpful doing details with landscapes and um, all kinds of details with um, even in uh, other paintings as well, like uh, cityscapes, doing fine ornaments and things uh, like fencing or lights, light posts, um, interesting things like that, F details with trees and limbs and things. So here we're going to do some quick um, details on the fence. And that's all we need to do. A couple quick, again in the same feel of the painting originally. And, uh, and that should be good. So we're gonna say we're gonna say this is fine here with the fencing. That's good. Let's come up here. We're gonna leave this uh, a grayish color. We don't want to go too dark over here, but we're gonna put in some of those uh, interesting uh, tree uh, limbs and shapes here. Nothing too uh, incredibly detailed. Just a little bit. We had. Um, We had some uh, trees over here in the distance in front of these houses. These are some shore homes. Um, I didn't want to make this too... Here again, less is more. Um, this is a place where we could easily get into big problems by going with too much detail over here. So again, that that's good. Maybe just... Again, I should trees are swaying this way. Okay, that looks good. And again, the um, we'll use our needlepoint brush. We'll go a little darker here. Cerulean blue, burnt umber, burnt sienna. Make, makes a nice decent dark here. Maybe some uh, sap green. Olive green, sap green, viridian green. And we could do some. And this just really adds a lot. A couple of these. And then we lead the eye into the painting this way with our some weeds and grasses and things. We could mix up a different color. That might be good. So we use um, yellow ochre. And that's pretty much it. We don't want to do more than that. I think it's always a good safe bet whenever we're um, painting, in our paintings, of trying to um, keep in mind that a little bit of everything looks looks good. If we do all one thing too much in a painting, it might not look so great. So if I kept doing 
more of like all of these grasses and I started putting these grasses everywhere it wouldn't look so good but we we used uh, a little bit of restraint and we said okay we're just going to add some of these grasses with our hockey brush our hake brush so we splayed out our hockey brush we got some paint on there and we splayed out the and we got some good nice details and then we used our um, needlepoint brush too uh, a little bit of grasses here not too much though again just a few here and there um, I left this open and I put no not too many grass um, weeds and, and brush and things here so that you feel like you can walk into the painting like this so if we blocked it all off with weeds and things over here then it would feel like we're sort of being blocked from going into the scene so let's keep this little bit of an opening of into the scene this way here and then we can go through it and look you know we can as a visually we can go in and we're we feel invited into here we come in there's an opening here we come through we look around we can finish this jetty this was a dark stone jetty going across here let's do that okay so we'll get another uh, round brush And we'll do some uh, some darker darks, but I don't want to go too dark here. But it's going to be cool colors. Uh, a little bit of burnt umber with mostly French ultramarine blue and some cerulean blue. And then we can do the uh, jetty with the rocks. So that's going to be round shapes. And I just kind of go with a good pace here. I'm trying to leave um, some of the white of the paper here. And also rounded shapes so that we kind of see them as round stones. I'm going to mix in a little bit of um, yellow ochre here just to... But again, mostly the blue, French ultramarine, cerulean. Then once we get Okay, and that's okay, and that is looking good. All right, now I'm going to use this mixture that we were using, French Ultramarine Blue, Burnt Umber, a little bit of Cerulean Blue maybe, and then I'm going to add in some, let's stick with the colors we've been using, so a little bit of Sap Green, and let's just add a little shadow along this. This makes a big difference too, that little detail just running a shadow along this, this shoreline of this jetty makes a big difference. It really looks a lot better if we do that.
and it's kind of mysterious. Here, I'm going to try to keep the whites, uh, those highlights to a minimum. So it's almost like I want it to look like the jetty is in front and then there's a beach behind it, some more sand behind it. So here, out this way, I want to see if I can maybe. That looks good. I'm going to leave it like that. And I think everything else is looking fine. You can also do a little more detail if you feel. Um, but I think this is enough detail where we can call this like a, a nice finished painting here. It's all completed. Everything's um, the way we saw it when we were out there painting. I'm going to try to get a photograph uh, off of my video camera and see if I can get a photograph and I'll post that on the uh, picture for this video so you can kind of see the the picture of the scene. I'm not sure if I actually have a picture of it at all. I don't think I took a picture of it when I was out uh, painting. But in any case, this is the finished painting with the added details once we brought it back to the studio. Hope you enjoyed this. We're going to have more of these type videos uh, in the future, so please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button if you like this video, and again, comments, thumbs up, let me know if you like this kind of format where we go out and maybe do some work in the field and then we come back in the studio and finish it up. If you like that kind of a format, I'll do more of it. If no one's interested in it, I, I probably won't do it. Um, I would just do it for my own fun, you know, go out and paint a little bit. Okay, everyone, so have a great evening, morning, afternoon, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye-bye.